the Holocaust. Everyone learns about the Holocaust in history class, but do you really know the whole story? We all know the basic information about the German population becoming the main target for the Nazi party, as well as that there were many casualties throughout the duration of the tragedy. The differences in the treatment of the people during this time are also major. The Nazi, par the Nazi reign created fear and catastrophe during the time while they had luxuries of power and pride. However, the journals created by the people of discrimination and anti-Semitism shed light on the experiences that were likely universal during this time. Overall, the Holocaust is made up of these events before, during, as well as the effects created by the major event in history. The beginning of the Holocaust. So basically, the Nazis were against the Jews and the word for this is anti-Semitism, and they made Jews wear the Star of David on their clothes, on like where their heart is. And the Jewish people were the main target during the Holocaust, but there were also many different other parties that were targeted. The Nazi party was in power during the Holocaust as well. And there were many things that they did to discriminate against the Jews and other parties like the crystal knock or the night of broken glass. And this was an event where they basically went into Jewish towns and they broke a bunch of store windows and basically destroyed all their shops. Um, after this time, Jews were also sent to the ghettos and these were basically just camps where they were sent to work and live, but there were terrible conditions and they were paid very badly as well. And in a botanical article by Michael Berenbaum, he says, the ghetto's population reached a density of more than 200,000 persons per square mile and 9.2 per room. Disease, malnutrition, hunger, and poverty took their toll even before the first bullet was fired. And basically, this is just talking about how the ghettos were a terrible place to live and everything, every thing of life was just awful for them. The people control, being controlled by the Nazis would also soon start to document their experiences and these came in the forms of diaries and journals. So some examples of this would be Anne Frank and we all know her famous words because of her diary basically. And she talks about her experiences and a lot of girls resonate with this because she was a young girl and during tough times. And Alexandra Zapruder states in the article on Anne Frank's house, in a twist of fate, however, it was precisely Anne Frank's musings, as she described them, that brought the subjects of Jewish shuffering during the Holocaust into homes of many millions of readers. <clears throat> um, Concentration camps and extermination camps were also events that took place during the Holocaust. And these were places like more extreme versions of ghettos where Jews and people that were discriminated against were sent to live, work, and basically sent there to die. So one of the most, or one of the concentration camps were very like prominent during this time and they just played a major major role in the Holocaust because it's one of the things that a lot of people know a lot about. Um, one important thing about the Holocaust was that Dr. Mangala was a doctor there and he liked to perform experiments and he was known for his experiments on twins and other things like that and he would inject things into people's eyes as well. Um, the gas chambers were also another major way that people would die during the Holocaust because they were just sent there and told they were taking showers and strip off their clothes, but then they would die. And there were also other prisoners that their job was to basically clear the bodies out of the gas chambers, but sometimes they even knew them, which was really heartbreaking. A lot of the times the prisoners were either being shot, they had diseases all throughout the camps, or they were starved to death. And Auschwitz was like the main camp 
at during the Holocaust. Okay. And the way that they died is shown in a history.com article which states, after the start of World War II, Adolf Hitler, the Chancellor of Germany from 1933 to 1945, implemented, an, implemented a policy that came to be known as the Final Solution. Hitler was determined not to just isolate Jews in Germany and countries annexed by the Nazis, but subjecting them to dehumanizing de de regulations and random acts of violence. So this just goes to show that that I am starving to death, being shot and killed in brutal ways was on purpose and they weren't just forgetting about them. So another, more things about Auschwitz um, are that the main target were Jews, like I said before, but there were also homosexuals, artists, and many physically and mentally handicapped people were also killed. There were also factories that were where people would work during these times and these people were labor labeled as laborers. Birkenau was a subdivision of Auschwitz and it was a center of control for the camps. There were also many effects of the Holocaust. About seven or six million people died with all those ways. And there were also many survivors that got to tell their stories after the fact. And they told stories about how they got separated from their families, the selections, which they would be basically told if they were fit or unfit for the camp. And they would also, they also told, told how they survived everyday life. Um, at the end of the Holocaust, the prisoners were liberated by soldiers and brought to salvation. Germany was also forced to reconcile for their actions and had to pay. In a History.com article, it states, over the decades that followed, ordinary Germans struggled with the Holocaust's bitter, bitter legacy. As survivors and families of victims sought restitution of wealth and property confiscated during the Nazi years. Beginning in 1953, the German government made payments to individual Jews and the, to Jew, the Jewish families that were acknowledged to the Jewish people as a way of acknowledging the German people's responsibility for the crimes committed in their names. Some of these leaders that were set on trial and the Nuremberg trials were held to punish the Nazis, but the few that could per be persecuted were not enough compared to the total amount of them involved. Um, also, Hitler was the main guy in charge basically because he was the chancellor and he actually killed himself before he could be captured and set to trial. So that's basically what that says and at the gate of Auschwitz there was an archway that said Arbeit macht free which basically means work sets you free but that was really not the case. Overall the Holocaust was a terrible time in the world. The majority of the targets during the Holocaust were considered Jews, even if they didn't name themselves to be. Many traumatic events happened during the Holocaust to these victims. The journals and diaries written by the victims, as well as the stories from the survivors, just go to show what the world was really like during this time of hardship. The prisoners were sent to ghettos, concentration camps, as well as extermination camps. There they were beaten, shot, contraction diseases, as well as starved to death. Auschwitz was the main and biggest concentration and extermination camp during the Holocaust. The saying, Arbeit macht free, was written on the archway at Auschwitz, meaning, work sets you free. And that is the Holocaust.